Morning everyone. So today we're over at uh, Garage D. Uh, we're down here with, uh, with Danny Grundy. Uh, he was a Pro-Am champion last year. Um, obviously this year he's in the Pro classes. Um, round one he was in uh, the top eight, sadly knocked out by Mark Huxley. Um, but um, he's, uh, he's gunning for round two so uh, hopefully we'll see him on a, a podium. Um, today's going to be like, um, we're going to show you the, a comparison between a BDC car and what makes a BDC car tick in comparison to um, a, a hot boy scene kit car um, which doesn't really work kind of thing. Um, so basically we're going to go around the car, go through a few kind of like subcategories, talk about what makes it uh, work for for a BDC use and then go over to my car and basically just highlight the differences and, and, and why a stance car maybe doesn't quite work in, in a competition uh, environment. Um, so we'll, um, we'll, we'll get onto that now and I'll, uh, I'll show you around. We'll start off of course with the exteriors of the car. They, as you can see from them, they're, they're both S14 Zenkis. They're both running the Yoras Type 1 kit, um, but they're, let's say, our, my kit's from uh, EP Racing. Danny's is from uh, Aero Kit. Obviously, the bonnets are different. Danny's got a nice vent, it's carbon underneath, it's been painted on the top, whereas I've just got this stock one with the nice crease in the corner from when I uh, hit the wall at, uh, at Rockingham. At the back of the cars, they are fairly similar, obviously, the, the, the kit's the same. You'll notice that there's nothing here um, it's got a nice uh, EMP setup but it's all underneath tucked out of the way um, putting out to the side so you get that cool um, I don't know like if you have I'll try and get a clip now when when you see people with those kind of exhausts when they're spinning up the rears the exhaust blows the the smoke out the sides and it always looks pretty cool um, the lights on here are the Zen the Zenki setup but also with uh, we've got a little bit of mix mix and match here um, this is a standard one, these are a nice smoke setup. I think usually Danny has a full smoke setup on there. The 326, which is obviously identical to mine. Um, but another thing to note is that uh, there's pins towards the back of the car um, to keep the, uh, the boot down. There's also the same for the bonnet, um, and that's one of the BDC rules. Moving further around, We've got these uh, these nice uh, bolt-on over fenders, similar to myself. They're plus 50 mil, um, similar design, uh, similar um, fit. Uh, these are supplied by SRB Power. Right, so at the front, obviously, uh, my front end is nice and in in one piece. But obviously, as competitions go, thing, things get a little bit heated and uh, accidents happen. The front wing, unfortunately, came off. That was uh, sort of like mid lap. That came off, you powered on, kept going, didn't give a shit about it. Um, and then there was a small incident towards the, the end of the run. Um, and, you know, accidents happen. So we've, uh, we've done a little bit of damage to the, the front bumper there, lost the headlight, but thankfully I've turned up. And I brought a spare. So uh, soon it'll all be, all be in one piece, you see? Good as new. Right, so obviously the outsides, they're, they, they're quite easily comparable. Under the bonnet, even more so. So uh, Danny's gonna talk you through his bay, and then I'll talk you through my bay. And I know you're thinking I'm gonna talk about Tom, but I'm talking about engine bays this time around, all right? Right, so this is my SR20 engine. It's running a Brian Crower 2.2 stroker kit, which re reliability is key. This is uh, the very reliable proven package with the SR. Um, running on a six boost UK manifold, uh, an Owen Development GTX 30 turbo, um, powered by a Link ECU G4 plug and play. So obviously you've seen how, how polished and, and uh, powerful that engine bay looks. Um, with mine, mine's just a, a, a standard SR20 engine, still running the VVT in there. Um, I've got the front mounted intercooler at the front, uh, running a Driftworks Rad. Uh, it's got the Horsham Developments uh, Stage 1 uh, chip on it, um, along with the Horsham um, intake manifold for that little, little bit extra power. 
Um, the last time it was dynoed, it was about two, two eight nine, something around that sort of figure. Um, and it's got the S15 T28R uh, roller bearing turbo on there. Okay, so the next thing is obviously fitment. Um, obviously, the the way that I set my car up is to essentially suit the wheels and suit the style that I'm after. Um, so it's very much more form over function. Whereas with Danny's car, it's the complete opposite. Everything is done for a reason. Every every millimeter of, of adjustment makes a huge difference. The, they're both running 18 inch rims, um, XXRs on Danny's. Um, I've got a mixture of VSKF and SSRs. Tire sizes is another big thing. Uh, Danny's running a 235 4018 Westlake. Super grippy, nice nice uh, width on them for, for grip. Um, whereas with my car, I'm running a 225 3518, lots of stretch, just a, a Nankang NS2, so not the grippiest out there, but grippy enough that it's not a budget. Um, so there's, there's, there's obviously a much more of a focus on handling and grip with a BDC setup, whereas mine, really I've put no thought into how it's gonna grip or, or handle at all when it comes to my, my wheel choices. So on the rear of my S14, we run a little bit of positive camber just to allow for when the rear squats down, the tires to open up and really sit true and flat on the tarmac, which increases the traction on the rear end. Whereas with my rear, I've got lots of negative camber just because essentially my wheels don't fit. Um, when I have my drift wheels on, I do have a little bit more room to play with, but obviously because I want the car to look as, uh, in the way that it does. I can't really get rid of that camber because then I would enter problems with these. Um, so in, in theory with my car, I have that negative camber, which it gives me less grip. And then when it squats, it gives me even more negative camber, which means I have even less grip. So that is definitely something that in the future I need to look at to bring it more in line with Danny's setup. They're both running BC coilovers, so in that respect they are running the same. The difference being that I've dropped mine as, as low as I can to suit the fitment of my the wheels that I like, whereas Danny's is set up uh, very specifically for the right type of grips and um, responsiveness that he needs to be competitive. Um, so they're completely different. I imagine this is much more snappy and grippy, whereas this can sometimes feel a little bit lazy in transition um, and a little softer. So with my S14, I like a very snappy and fast transitioning setup. So on my car, we run quite a lot of caster, whereas with Perry's car, I think he runs less caster. And as a result of that, the transitioning from side to side is a bit slower and maybe a bit more manageable. But for competitions, chasing, you need a really snappy, fast setup, particularly when you're driving close with your opponents. So obviously with competitions, you have to have uh, certain regulations, certain um, certain bits of equipment that are on the car for safety reasons, um, for when you're on the track, essentially. Um, so with Danny's setup, obviously there's things like he's got FIA seat, FIA harnesses, uh, there's cutoffs around the car, um, and there's also uh, extinguishers in various places around the car, completely down to safety, down to regulations, um, keeps everyone safe out on track. Um, the interior's been completely stripped out, that gives you a lot of uh, weight reduction. Um, so there's only really a dash in there that's, that's left from the, the standard setup. In essence, everything's stripped out, everything's uh, based on safety, weight reduction. So obviously with everything stripped out, um, there's a lot more space to put various things. Uh, he's running uh, Skyline rear brakes, 
with a, a, a small hydro setup here with a Willwood Will uh, mass cylinder. The only uh, you know style-based thought thrown into it is that he has uh, the gear shifter and the steering wheel uh, matching with this nice uh, black base with the red speckle, which I think looks really cool. Uh, so obviously the main difference between the, the striking difference between Danny's car and my car is that mine it does have a full interior, all the trims, all that sort of thing, carpets and everything else. Um, that's mainly down to I really wanted a street car, and this car does take um, quite a lot of trips. We don't have like a um, a truck or, or anything like that to take the cars to and from places, so it's nice to be able to sit in here, and not have too much noise in there, that sort of thing. So obviously the main difference being one's a stripped out, heavily regulated interior and mine is something where I try and keep it as comfortable as possible for those big long road trips. That's it for the day. Hopefully, uh, you've enjoyed a bit of a comparison between the two cars. Uh, it's really interesting to see them next next to each other. Obviously, the, the fully fledged competition car uh, against the uh, the hot boy lifestyler stance car. Um, they're very very similar, but they there are very big differences at the same time. So, it, it very much thank you uh, to to Danny Grundy for 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 bringing the car down and letting us view it and have a look. Um, Julian from Garage D for, for letting us come down on site, have a look around, it's been really interesting. Um, yeah, if, you, if you've ever got any Japanese car needs, whether that be spare parts, services or anything, uh, or if you're looking to import, um, coming down to Garage D, there's, there's um, a highly recommended place. So uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video and um, hopefully the next video, well, well, I think we're drifting at the end of this month. So uh, we've booked on at Drift Elite up at, uh, up at Throckmorton Airfield. Um, fairly local to us so um, yeah we'll, we'll be bringing you a video shortly of us actually out on track and uh, hopefully it goes a little bit better than Matsuri so um, thanks for watching bye <laughs>